When should you start seeds indoors? That's the question I'll answer in this video. The answer to the question can become quite complex, so I'll provide some simple rules at the beginning of the video, and then I'll expand on them so that more experienced gardeners can improve on the rules and fine-tune their own process. Which seeds am I talking about? This advice applies to any seed, but I'll focus mostly on vegetables, annuals, and perennials. I've literally grown thousands of species from seed, but I'll focus on the more common types. That means that the rules I'll give you work most of the time, but there are always going to be exceptions. If you want a really simple seed starting rule, this is it. Start seed six weeks before your last frost date. For annuals and perennials, you can extend this to eight weeks. Most seed germinates in two weeks. So this gives you four to six weeks of actual growing time before they go outside. And that is enough time to grow a good sized seedling that will survive on its own. Here's an even better simple rule. Follow the instructions on the package. This is simple and it works. Unless of course you collected your own seed or don't have a seed package. In that case, try to find the seed on an online seed catalog. Many of the better seed sources provide germination information right on their website. These instructions will be based on the last frost date. Another option is to use a seed planting chart, also called a seeding calendar. I'll scroll through one on the screen as I talk. These are handy for vegetables and common flowers, but they don't include most perennials. If your seed is not on a list, you can still use the list if you can find a similar plant. That date should be close enough. Calendars that use actual dates instead of the last frost date are quite useless because they're specific to a certain location. It's much better to find a list that uses the last frost date. That's great, but how do you find your last frost date? You can ask an experienced local gardener or your local master gardener group. They will know the date. You can also Google your area. There's lots of online help. But the problem with online help is that it's usually based on data from large cities. If you are in a small town, you won't find a date. And the date for a nearby large town is usually wrong for you because large towns generate their own heat, making their last frost date earlier than nearby towns or rural areas. Also keep in mind that this date has been moving with climate change. Historically, my date for Zone 5 was May 24th. It's now closer to May 8th. Once you know your last frost date, you can count backwards and find your start date. If we use our simple rule, the seeding date is six weeks before the last frost date. You can start seed for annuals at any time. The simple six week rule works and will give you plants for the garden. The problem with this is that most people want their annuals to flower soon after planting so they get a long season of color. To achieve this, you have to start annuals quite a bit earlier. Seed packages usually provide a date to flowering time, which is the growing time needed to produce a flowering plant. You can use this to back calculate a seed date. For example, if the date to flowering time is three months, then you can start the seed three months before the last frost date. Perennials rarely flower the first year from seed. Some will flower the second year, and some, like peonies, will take five years before they flower. For this reason, it's less important to start perennials early. Many can be started using the simple six-week rule. Some perennial seed takes a couple months to germinate, so they are best started earlier so that you have a good-sized plant by the time it goes outside. In this case, I like to use my baggy method so I don't have empty pots sitting around waiting for something to germinate. I have a separate video to show you how to do this. Another way to start perennials is with winter sowing, which eliminates the need to get the seeding date right. You plant the seed anytime during the winter and let nature take care of things. 
With this method, you can ignore the proper seed starting date. So far in this video, I've given you some simple rules to determine the seed starting date. As you gain more experience, you can fine tune this date based on a number of considerations. Available light, pot size and available space, cheating nature, getting an earlier harvest, and using a heating mat. Let's have a look at each of these in detail. Many people start seeds next to windows or under shop lights. These can provide enough light for small seedlings, but as the plants grow, they need more light. If you don't provide enough light, growth slows down and they get leggy. If you can provide good lighting, you can start seeds earlier and produce larger transplants. This will speed things up once they go into the garden. But if you can't provide good lighting, it is better to start later and aim for smaller transplants. Many people can't wait for spring and start plants way too early, ending up with weak, sickly plants. Healthy small seedlings will do much better than poorly grown larger plants. Modify your start time based on the amount of light you can provide. Let's look at pot size. There's a big trend towards using small pots for starting seeds, including things like eggshells, single-serve yogurt containers, jiffy pots, and toilet paper rolls. The plastic six-packs used by commercial growers are also very popular. These can all be used to start seed, but the plants quickly outgrow their space. Before roots start to get root bound, you have to move them to larger pots. Personally, I start my seed in larger pots so they don't have to be transplanted. Larger pots means that you need a lot more space with good lighting. It also means more soilless mix and more watering. Are you prepared to do that? If not, it's better to delay your seed starting so the seedlings don't outgrow their smaller pots. Now, larger pots can grow some nice large vegetables. I've had tomato plants flower in my sunroom very early in spring. But you need large pots and smaller varieties to make this happen. There is also a common myth floating around about potting on. It says that you should never put a plant in a pot that's too big for it. Instead, move the plant from pot to pot, increasing the size slowly. This is a complete myth. Plants actually grow better starting right in the bigger pot. Cheating nature. This applies mostly to vegetables, but you can also get some perennials flowering the first year by starting them very early. In cold climates, you want to do everything you can to have an early harvest especially for things like tomatoes that take a long time to produce their first fruit. One option is to gamble with nature. The last frost date is just an approximate date. In some years, it happens two weeks earlier, and in other years, two weeks later. You can take a chance and aim for an early harvest. Start things a few weeks early and hope that nature is kind to you. If you do happen to get a late spring, you'll just have to keep the plants indoors longer than ideal. Another option is to plant outside early and then cover them if frost shows its ugly head. This can work, but you have to know the plant. Some, like tomatoes, are very sensitive to cold. Some growers will split their seed and plant some early and some later. They can then use the best seedlings based on the weather gods. Getting an earlier harvest. This applies mostly to vegetables. Plants need to be a certain size before they start producing food, so larger transplants will give you an earlier harvest. With tomatoes in zone 5, you can be eating fruit two to four weeks earlier with large transplants. Cucumbers are normally seeded directly in the garden, but seed won't germinate until the soil is warm enough, giving you a late start. You can get a much earlier harvest by starting plants indoors. Ignore the common advice that cucumbers don't transplant well. 
Just do it gently and you'll be fine. I have a video showing you how to do this. Some people even start root crops like beets and carrots indoors and then transplant them outside when weather permits. What about using a heating mat? A heating mat is not required unless you're starting seeds in a very cold basement, but most seed will germinate faster with a bit of heat. In a cold basement, a heating mat can speed up germination by a week or two, which affects your start time. But once those seedlings have germinated, it's important that you remove the mat. Seedlings grow much better at cooler temperatures. There you have it. You now know when to start your seed, but what comes next? What is the best way to start seed? I made a video that compares various methods to help you select the one that works best for you. I'll put a link to that video in the top right hand corner. I'll also put a link to my seed starting playlist in the bottom right hand corner. It contains more of my seed starting videos dealing with things like scarification, how to stratify properly, and how to get perennial seedlings to maturity. It also contains the winter sowing video and the baggy video. Have fun with your seeds.